there's quite a common misconception that it is going to cost you money to get Home Assistant up and running. You you start off and people will tell you, hey, you need to buy a Raspberry Pi, and then you get told that one's not powerful enough, so you buy yourself another Raspberry Pi, and then you get told that the micro SD card might start failing, so you end up buying more stuff to go with it and plugging in fast storage, and you can carry on down this route, but you don't actually have to spend any money to get up and running with Home Assistant to try it out. You'll have seen Home Assistant dotted about on the internet. And if you spend any time watching YouTube videos or reading through forums, Home Assistant is something that comes up again and again and again. You can try it completely free. It'll probably take five minutes of your time and you can start to play about with it, get a feel for it. I think if you're the sort of person who likes jumping into settings when you get a new app or any new device and you want to go and tinker with it a little bit, Home Assistant's perfect for you. So let's dive in, you can try it out. When you go over to Home Assistant, it's gonna tell you there's a bunch of different ways that you can install it. So you can get Home Assistant Green, which is a great way to get started, but it does cost you money. Uh, you can set it up yourself with Raspberry Pi. This is what I originally did. Again, it's gonna cost you money. Same thing with Home Assistant Yellow, gonna cost you money. Other hardware, obviously gonna cost you money if you want like something like an Intel NUC. And then it's under advanced installation methods. It's really not that complicated. What we're gonna look at is Home Assistant in a Docker container. And this is what you're basically gonna get from it. So you're gonna be installing Home Assistant Core in a container. So you're not gonna have access to things like add-ons or one-click updates, but you really don't need them to be able to try out Home Assistant. And if you want functionality from some of the add-ons, you can just install them in a container right next to, to your Docker container for Home Assistant, and you'll get up and running pretty much in the same way, and you'll have access to exactly the same stuff you'd get from add-ons anyway. So let's dive in. If you head over to docker.com, and we're just gonna go and download the desktop version of Docker, so you're gonna to want to go to Docker, Docker Desktop, and then just download for whichever platform you happen to be installing for. So once you've got Docker installed, you can go and create a new directory that we're gonna house all of our config files in. So we're just gonna create something called Home Assistant, and we're gonna go into there and create a file called uh, Docker Compose. And that's gonna be a YAML file and we're gonna open this and edit it. So once we're editing that file, we're gonna paste in the YAML. I'm gonna leave some code down in the description of the video so you can just copy paste it. And what this is gonna do is we're going to create a container called Home Assistant, and the container is gonna be created based off of this image, which is on the GitHub repo. Uh, we're gonna create a volume. That volume is gonna be a path to the directory that we've just created and put this Docker Compose YAML in, and we're gonna map it over to the config folder within the container, and then we're gonna map, etc. local time from our computer onto etc. local time on the container as read-only. We want it to restart unless it's stopped, and it's gonna map the ports 8123 on the host over to 8123 on the container and Home Assistant runs on port 8123. So that means you'll be able to go effectively to localhost port 8123 and it will forward all of that to the container. So once we've edited that and saved that file, we're just gonna quickly hop back here and make sure that we have a config folder, which is the one that we created. Now we should have everything up and running. We're just going to do Docker from this folder, uh, Docker compose. What that's gonna do is it's gonna pull all of the images that we need for building this. It's gonna download them, might take a second. Okay, now that's all done, we can hit view in Docker Doc desktop, which is what we set up earlier. And that is going to give us this, this view here. We can go in and view the configurations if we want. You can see we've got the YAML that we posted in, and uh, this is our container that it's gonna be running in, which is great. If you want to, you can go and view the details of this container and we're gonna have everything that we want to get access to potentially. So we've got these files. These files are going to exist in the directory that you created your container that you spun up uh, the Docker Compose from. And there's gonna be particularly interesting files in this directory here. This is the config directory. 
and this is going to store a lot of the stuff that's quite important to Home Assistant. So you've got things like your automations stored as YAML file and your basic configurations stored as YAML file, any secrets that you want to potentially set up for integrating with other services. So now that's all set up, we can actually log into Home Assistant. The IP address of my computer, port 8123, is the port that we'd mapped when we spun up the Docker container. So we're going to go to that, and there we go. We have an instance of Home Assistant running. So we're going to tap Create My Smart Home. We're going to give it a name that we want to try out. We're going to give it a password. I'm just going to use Sandbox for now. I would advise that you don't use that. Maybe use something else. Create an account, defaulting to Amsterdam. Sure, why not? We're in the UK, but, but why not? Um, and then you're going to select your country as well. So we're going to select United Kingdom here and carry on through. Um, I always tick all of this stuff, help out, help out the folks at Home Assistant. And we're all set, finish. Now we have it, this is Home Assistant up and running. And now you might be thinking, okay, cool. What next? <laughs> what, do I, what do I do now? Um, so we're gonna run through a couple of basic examples. Uh, we can create some automations, pull in some services and stuff like that. So uh, generally what you're gonna to wanna to do is head over to settings and devices and services and this is typically where you can put in a lot of different integrations and add-ons. Um, so as an example, I can demonstrate why it took so long for me to get Docker Compose up and running and why it took so long to download stuff because you can just add speed test and you're gonna see how abysmally slow my internet connection is. Um, so we can go, we can go and add some other stuff as well, and start to start to pull other things in as well. Just while um, while this is firing up and getting up and running. So if we head on over back to here, we can add another integration. So I've got some WLEDs kicking around the house, and I'm going to add one of these hosts. So I think 106. That's one of the WLEDs. I'm gonna hit submit, and we're done. Nice. Now we have another WLED device that is up and running that we're going to be able to control and you'll notice it's automatically added a bunch of stuff to the dashboard as well so i can turn the wled on and off i can set different effects on it that it's automatically picked up i can set the brightness very cool okay so we've got wled we've got speed test you can see how this is starting to come together this has taken us barely any time at all and all we're gonna do is head on over again to add another integration. And you can just have a browse through all of the integrations that you've got here. Maybe you've got AdGuard set up, maybe you've got a bunch of other stuff set up. I actually migrated over from SmartThings to Home Assistant. Um, so if you want, you can pull in SmartThings and grab all of your SmartThings devices and start to show those in Home Assistant. If you have some smart heating, I've got a Hive, for example. So I can go here and tap on Hive, and I'm gonna be able to log in. This is the example that I'm just gonna give YouTube for now. And boom, we have Hive in our Home Assistant. This is cool. So you can see, I've got a couple of devices, got my thermostat, got my hub, and this is everything that is pulling directly from Hive. Again, this took a couple of minutes to set up, and it's gonna add a nice fancy thermostat to my dashboard as well. So you can see we've taken maybe a few minutes to grab an instance of Home Assistant, spin it up on my computer, and now we've got all of this that's starting to build up the dashboard and bring everything together. And it was the matter of a few clicks, it, it wasn't complicated at all. And of course, to get a good feel for Home Assistant, you might want to go in and add an automation and see how this works. So we're gonna go into automations, create a new automation, and we're just gonna add a trigger. You can do something, for example, like change the time and location. When it's sunrise, we can do something like uh, control the hot water, and we're going to uh, boost the hot water. Here we go, this has been added because we added the Hive integration. And we're gonna choose the entity, which is the water heater, and we're gonna boost it for one hour, and of course set it to on. Um, and we're going to call this example automation boost hot water at sunrise. Click save. Now when the sun rises, 
hive will kick in and boost the hot water. Super simple, super easy to get up and running. Again, if you're the sort of person who likes to explore settings, you're gonna have a great time playing about with this and seeing exactly what you can integrate. Uh, I would recommend just going in, seeing what integrations exist. There's huge amounts. If you want to start to get a little bit more complicated with some of your integrations, maybe there's something bespoke that you want to add, you can maybe explore hacks. There's lots of videos out there how to install hacks and uh, get up and running with that. But definitely, definitely go check it out, have a little play. And then if you decide that Home Assistant is something that you want to explore more, you can start to think about whether you want to install this on something more permanent, so maybe a NAS box that will run Docker containers, or maybe you want to go and pick up one of the Home Assistant greens, or you want to go and buy yourself a Raspberry Pi and get, get running on that. But go have a play. It's, it's a great bit of kit. I definitely recommend checking it out. And it's going to take probably no more than 10 minutes out of your day to get it up and running just like this.